Hey YouTube, it's your favorite nurse B. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and you can see more videos on being a CNA all the way into being a nurse and all the craziness in between. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hey everybody, I wanted to let you all know how I became a CNA and just how my experience was as a CNA. So right now I'm an LPN, um, but it all started off when I had, uh, I was living out of town, I came back to St. Louis and one of my friends worked for a nursing home and she was like, definitely apply. I applied there and they didn't hire me. So like, I would say maybe two, maybe even three years later, somebody at the job that I was working for um, at that time was like, oh, I'm thinking about going out here to apply to become a CNA. They, they give you the classes, blah, blah, yada, yada. I was like, you know what? I did it before. Let me try it again. So I went for it, but at a different location, same company, but different location. And I got hired. So at my job, I'm still there as a nurse. Um, and at my job, they give you, they give you, you come in as a nursing assistant in training or NAT. And you take your classes while working for the facility as an NAT, but basically it's the role of a CNA. Basically, it's not anything different except for you're in training. So I did that. The class was 12 weeks. Um, we went one day a week. And then, of course, you would still work your full 40 hours a week. And it was okay. But definitely, let me start out by saying I never, ever, ever, ever wanted to be a nurse. Like, I'm going to be honest with you all. I used to think that nursing was something that every little black girl wanted to do. I did not want to do. I wanted to do something totally different. But I was ignorant to it. Like I didn't, I didn't really know the benefits or just like how um, satisfying it is to work in this field. I didn't know. I didn't really have anybody in my family that was a nurse that I knew of and I just didn't see the benefits of it. I was just like, it's something everybody wants to do. Oh yeah, it's good money. So what? But I didn't realized that I wanted to be a nurse until I became a CNA. Um, so I started off on a long-term uh, care floor for about a year, which was fine. Um, let me tell you all, just being, I was in my class, I was pretty much one of the only people who never worked, you know, in the field before. Like it was some people who worked as a CNA, but they weren't a CNA. So they were like a home health aide, um, but they just didn't have their certification. So they were familiar with, or they, you know, helped out their grandmother or grandfather or parents or whatever that needed help. Me, I just came in, only experience I had caring for people was that I worked at a daycare before. So I worked with babies. So I was familiar with bodily fluids, but it's totally different coming from an adult, like their body fluids. Like I, that was probably like the biggest shocker for me as a CNA when I was in training and I had a really good trainer. She still works for me now, with me now. So that was awesome. Like she was really good. Um, but anyways, she, we went into somebody's room. She showed me how to change the lady. Of course she had a BM and I was just like, the smell, the experience, everything just kind of stayed in my mind for like a while, like a whole week. And I was just like, this is crazy. Like it's, it's like you're like walking around and you just smell like somebody's feces like even if you're not around it's just like it just kind of stays in your mind like the imagery and everything when you first start you're like this is this is crazy like i don't know if i can do this or just feeding somebody for the first time you're kind of just like oh my gosh this is really weird like the drooling and all that you i mean i'm saying this now i don't now wipe their face off keep them clean feed them they burp, they fart, they poop, they pee, they bleed. It's part of life. It's it's what I'm doing. It's I'm caring for people. It happens when you care for people. But back then, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I could do this. But I stuck to it because I started it and I had to finish it. You know, why not? So that's just something. I mean, some people really, I don't think they realize what the job entails. I didn't, and I've heard some people tell me that they didn't realize, like, I didn't know this what we had to do, uh-uh. <laughs> but hey, whatever. So you have to wipe butts, that's just part of the job. So I did that and then for about a year, and then I went and I worked on a rehab floor, which actually if you 
going to be a CNA, I would definitely recommend working on a rehab floor. To me, it was really beneficial because I'm going to tell you a few reasons why it's good. So one, there's going to be patients that you take care of that you just don't care for, whatever it might be. I mean, they might have like the nastiest attitude, just, oh my gosh, like you just don't want to deal with them. But yet and still you have to because that's your job. But when you work on a rehab floor, at least where I'm, where I work and just in long term in general, people don't live on rehab floors. They're there to get rehab and then they either go home or they go to the long term care facility part or they go to like um, assisted living or to a different facility. Sometimes on the rehab floors though, people stay for a while, usually because they, they pay out of pocket. It's private pay. And you know, most facilities they want to have that private pay money on the rehab floor because you get paid more money when somebody's on a rehab floor. So even if this person never gets any freaking rehab, they might keep them there. Or even if um, that person, like the family is extremely persistent, like I want them to stay on this floor. I love this floor. I don't want them going anywhere. If they have to get moved, we're taking them out then they might let them stay on that floor for a while. Eventually they'll probably take them off, you know? So, but anyways, I say that to say this, if there's a patient that you don't really care for that much, stick in, do what you gotta do for them because eventually they're going to leave. So that's a good part of working on rehab. Also, usually when you work on long-term care, you're not always able to communicate with your patients. Um, you don't always get to learn about your patients. Um, and sometimes it's, you, you, you don't really, I mean, you get a connection cause you're caring for them, but as far as learning about them as a person, you don't really get to know that them as a person. Whereas when you work on rehab floors, a lot of the patients are a lot more alert. Um, they're more able to communicate with you what they need and what they want, what their dislikes are, what their likes are. And you just kind of get to know them and you, you. I don't know, you just kind of build, I wouldn't say a friendship, but you, you just build a relationship with your patients more when you work on a rehab floor. And sometimes it can seem more rewarding to work on a rehab floor as well because they're being rehabilitated, right? So they come in, you know, mom or dad has a hip replacement and they cannot walk. By the time therapy gets to them, my job, by the way, has great therapy. By the time therapy gets to them and you helping them out and restorative aids helping them out, doing all this, that, and the above, they're gonna walk out of that facility like able to walk able to do their own thing a totally different patient and it's kind of like you get to see them becoming better versus on long-term care you know you see them regressing for the most part so in some ways it's more rewarding in that way um also what would i say about the rehab floor um sometimes it's not as um that many patients over there so you might have a less a smaller load so say for instance like on a long-term care facility uh, floor you might have maybe 16 patients so about 16 patients four showers four or five showers and that's a lot that's a lot i'm gonna do a totally different video talking about like the day in the life of a cna and kind of go through um what you would basically come across from the start to the end of your day as a of your shift as a cna but anyways so yeah that's a lot to deal with on long-term care floors so working on the rehab floor you might have maybe 10 to 12 8 to 10 patients it just depends on the load usually uh, rehab floors don't have like a full a fully um a fully housed unit at least not where i work for the most part it's not really fully housed and if you do a lot of your patients can get up and go to the bathroom all you need all i need is like some you to stand by and kind of make sure they're getting their safety versus a long-term care floor pretty much 90 percent of your patients you're gonna have to use a lift to get them in the bed you're gonna have to use two people to get them in the bed or get them in the shower or it's it's definitely way more physical than being on the rehab floor but on the rehab floor you have to smile you have to communicate you have to uh hold yourself accountable more on a rehab floor you have to uh communicate more with family members on a rehab floor so it just it just depends on what type of person you are if you're a type of person that's good with talking to people and you can say you know what i'm gonna be here around between this time and this time and you can actually be there or if you're okay with people telling you i want x y and z and you can give them x y and z rehab floors for you to me i liked it because i knew what's I, I learned what my patients like and i was able to just give it to them and that'd be it 
you know, especially when you work behind or before somebody that you know is going to do the same thing as you. It's awesome. But anyway, so that was my experience um, as a CNA and I enjoyed it. I really did. It was times where I felt like, you know, nobody cares about us. We're at the bottom of the totem pole. I have nothing, you know, to offer. Like, I'm just a CNA. Nobody, I'm invisible. My DON, my ADON, they didn't know me. They didn't know me. I didn't know them. It was times I would hear the nurses say, oh, just go talk to the deal. I'm like, who is that? They don't know who I am. They don't care about who I am. And you, and unfortunately, in a lot of these facilities, that's, that's pretty much what it is. The aid is pretty much, oh, um, you can replace him or her, whatever. You know, and it's, it's unfortunate because when you have a good CNA, oh, I mean, it's, it's nothing like having a good CNA. Trust me. It's nothing like it as a nurse, especially as a new nurse, even just as a patient or a family member, it's nothing like knowing that you're able to leave mom or dad there with somebody and they are going to be taken care of. You can go to home and sleep good knowing that Sarah or Jacob or whomever is taking care of mom when I go home, you know? So that's that. But I just kind of felt like I just, I just, it was a lot of physical work, a lot of BS, you know, as far as getting moved, you come in, you start working, doing showers. Oh, you gotta go, you gotta go over here. Or, oh, you gotta take the smokers out or, um, such and such. You're going to have a new admit in this room and nobody told you anything. And the person's literally coming down the hallway. And so you got to hurry up and run and go in there and greet them and help them out and do all this. And it's just, you just kind of feel underappreciated. And instead of staying in that position and becoming bitter and becoming, um, I would say bitter and also just kind of let my frustrations come out on my patients or through or show, not on my patients, but just kind of show through my work ethic. I decided to go higher. So that's why I became an LPN. Um, not to say that staying a CNA is not the good way to go because at the end of the day, we still need good CNAs. But just for me, my motto or my my frame was if I'm going to work hard, I'm going to get paid to do it. And that's why I became a nurse. Um, but I definitely think that it's great to become a nurse. I mean, become a CNA before you be a nurse. You, you, um, a lot of things that you're going to learn is just, it's invaluable. What you're going to learn is you can't really put, um, a price on it. What you're going to learn as a CNA going into nursing, going into being a nurse, it's, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to be a stronger nurse in my point of view. And you're just going to be more comfortable with patients. And, um, but I learned a lot as a CNA, you, once, one thing you learn to be patient when you're working with the elderly, you're going to be patient. You have to be, you just have to just, it's their world. Let them do what they're going to do. And just, yes, yeah, Sally, Sue and Bob is waiting on you down there. But guess what? The most important patient is the patient that you're with at that moment. Hands down. I learned that a long time ago. I left a patient on the toilet. I looked down the hallway, I saw I had a light on. I was like, okay, I'm gonna leave her on a commode and run down here and see what this is like. Cause I got these lights going off. Oh my gosh, what do they want? Come back, my patient is on the floor. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, did I really leave this lady on the floor? Like, it was horrible. But the patient was like, Brandy, why did you leave me? And she was like, why did you leave? You should have stayed. And I, it was like, I had no reason why I left her only because I was feeling so rushed and overwhelmed that I had to go answer a light and just see what was going on with the other patient. When in reality, like I said, the most important patient, the VIP is the one that you're taking care of at that moment. And that's just what you got to focus on as a CNA, just, or anything that you're doing, just focus on who you're taking care of and everybody else can wait. That's just what it comes down to. So that's some advice I would definitely give to anybody. Um, so that's how my experience was. It was good experience. Um, I'm going to do some videos talking about like the class, how to pass the CNA test. If you're all having issues with that, um, let me know if there's anything else that you want to know about being a CNA or being a nurse, um, whether it be school, certain tips, anything that you might want to know, uh, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and like, and I hope you all enjoyed this video.